You got your long dowel. You got one band, two more. Faster, harder. Well, there's another band inside, but you won't use it. Okay, so it's like a replacement if the other one breaks. And the way I like to do this personally is when I do take them through the in body, I flip the in body sheet over and then I fill it out. So I put the name, okay, the name is up there. And then on there I got the hand and the tibia at the top, okay? Hand and tibia at the top. And then underneath all of that is the actual screen test themselves, okay? So this is the back of the in body, that's here. Or at least that's how I like to do it. So then I can form from this. You have their name on it, and you can file it, okay? And come back and reference it. Later. You don't always have to take the measurements from them. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, I'm going to steal you guys. Yeah, good. Okay. So the functional movement screen. For the professional running the screen, there's a need for deeper knowledge and understanding of each screen, right? So what you guys have to do when you give this test is actually care about what the scores are and try and figure out what's wrong with each person, right? Um, scoring criteria only matters once the FMS professional verbally instructs the person being screened into the setup position. This needs to be perfect for each rep, the setup itself, okay? So make sure when you're coaching them, you're telling them what they're supposed to be doing without actually giving them the information to perform the actual exercise. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's kind of confusing. Uh, before you start the test, make sure you take your measurements of the hand and tibia and set your score sheet up. So what you'll do, you'll take the big dowel. I'm going to ask them to hold their hand out for you, okay? Just like that. And then you're going to take the dowel from the bottom of the palm up to the tip of the middle finger. And Bradley's a 17, okay? So he's 17 clicks on the dowel. So I'll mark that on my sheet, 17. And I'm gonna have him stand up with his feet shoulder width. And I'm gonna take the dowel, I'll line it up right next to the bottom of his leg. I'm gonna find the middle of his kneecap. And then you kind of have to eyeball it. And he's gonna be 50, okay? So his tibia is 50 and his hand is 17. Now from here, you're going to go into your first movement, which will be the deep squat, but we'll talk about scoring first. Uh, so when you score it, they're in the four buckets. Bucket one being that when I did the movement, it hurt. Somewhere along the lines, they had pain. We don't push through the movement. You guys just stop them, annotate that, and move on. Uh, bucket two is inability to perform the movement as directed. They would receive a one for the movement. Okay. Bucket three, asymmetry between right and left scores. So maybe on one side they had a competent movement, but on the other side it was not competent, right? So you're looking at bucket three. And then bucket four, they had a competent movement, two or three. Minimal things that you had to say to them. Uh, it looked good. And you guys should be able to, this isn't something you're trying to take forever with. You want to be detailed with it, but it should be really easy to get through talking 10 or 15 minutes. Um, all right, so the first one, where's the other sheet at? Okay. So what we're looking for with the screens, um, there's a lot of information that you guys can get while watching your screener, and take your time. Some of these might not work for certain people. The one, the rotary stability, you literally are doing a push-up where you're already in a compromised position. If they do it wrong, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to jump to the low back, and they're not going to be very happy about it, right? So make sure that you're talking to them about the medical issues or injuries. It's very important. If you hurt them, you got a problem. These are really simple movements, okay? So don't be hurting too hard. Okay, so the deep squat, Bradley. The only thing I'm going to show them is where to take the dowel. So grab the dowel, you're going to hold it with loose hands. And you're going to put it right on top of your head. From there, I'm going to adjust it. You're looking for a 90 degree bend in the elbow. Okay. From here, you're going to have them press up, hold it up, set your feet to what's comfortable for you, and let's see how deep you can go in your squat. Okay, so go ahead and go back down here and hold it. 
what's the first thing where we see that Bradley's doing right now? Leaning forward. Right, so he's got that forward tilt, right? We want to see if that client can keep that bar directly overhead. So the bar path never goes forward or, well, probably wouldn't go back or up. It's not smooth movement, right? What else are we looking for? Means. Means what? Forward, out, in. Tracking, right? We like to see the knee go out, make sure that, you know, his outside of his butt is active. What else are we looking for on the actual backside of the squat? Come back up and do it again, brother. And sit back down. Again. Actually, it looks pretty good. So right now, the only thing I would say is, his feet look good. But that T-spine mobility to support the overhead position, he's probably got some really, really tight lats. You all agree? Bradley, do you think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, you get to see when he goes down into that depth, if he's got control and coordination through his pelvis, his hips, his knees, and his arms. Okay. If somebody can't get down into, actually, go take it back up again. If they can't get into the position, the way to degress this is for Bradley to take his feet. He's going to do the same thing, just with his heels up on the box. Okay. Open up. So you're going to press up. You're going to keep it up. It's as deep as you can. Seeing so a little bit deeper with that, right? His butt didn't stop. His chest is encaving. Everything looks pretty good. So I would give Bradley at least a two for that. And I would be riding a bunch of stuff. What are uh, some other things that we're going to see commonly? Um, the knee cave, right? Or they won't even be able to get down into the position, mm -hmm. right? And that's just a part of the game. Some some people won't be able to do this stuff at all. Right. Yeah. That is pretty Lean forward. No pain is a zero. Pain is zero. Later. If you have pain, you guys are always should be always asking that too while you're going through that. At least each movement you're asking, do you feel pain at all? Something that you're looking for. And the other thing you commonly see is the weight shift forward off the heel into the ball of the foot, which a lot of times foot elevating their heels will fix that. He didn't have an issue there. His weight was really good. Good spot, man. That's good spot. Okay, so we're going to go into the hurdle step. So now we're going to take that measurement we used with the tibia, and we're going to grab our two smaller poles. And you're going to take the band, and you're going to set it up. You're going to fix it, So you're going to set it up one side with me, and then the other side. So, you guys probably saw this, this thing comes off, but it's like a little case hand, so you can pick it up and you don't have to worry about it falling over. But from there, you take your little poles, and you're gonna put them in the holes, just like that. Okay, so now you set up for his hurdle step. And here you guys are looking for controlled flexion of the ankle and knee, while the hips doing the stepping motion on the other leg. Maintaining extension and control on the opposite leg. We're looking for core control. Control. Single leg stance is essential for walking, jogging, and running. This translates to real life pretty, pretty hardcore. Uh, tibial height is similar to the mechanics of sprinting and acceleration. That's why we do that measurement, and that's why this is set where it's at. Okay. So the hurdle step itself. You're gonna take the dowel and put it right here on your back, and then from there you're gonna take your feet all the way to the edge of the box. No proprioception, you're not going to look, okay? So hold it here, close to the edge, and then from here what we're going to do is lift the leg up, reach the foot forward, tap the heel on the ground, heel, 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 not belly up, and then we'll bring it back, replace it right there. Okay, so what are we looking for right off the bat? What External rotation. Right External there. rotation in the hip, right? When he brings it up and starts to go into extension, what's the first thing we see? One more time. Where did he go? Out. External rotation, right? So that's a big one to look for. What are we also seeing on the left leg while he's holding up, though? Wobbly. A little wobbly, but he seems pretty sturdy and strong here. What about his core? Looks like he's got a big pack. It looks good. It felt good, too. Right? So go ahead and finish it out or put it back, and then we'll do the other side. This is the left leg coming up and over. Mm. Tap the heel, bring it back, and replace. Anybody what we see on the first one? External rotation. External rotation. Let's do it again. Okay, now he's standing again. 
Good job, buddy. Yes. Bring it back to the place. So the proprioception, you're not letting them look when they take the foot over, right? They also have an added uh, obstacle having that down on their back, okay? Um, so that's that would be your fertile step, and I would do probably a, give you a, okay. I'll give you a three. Would you? I noticed some asymmetry on the right side, left side. Right side, you got that tip opened up a little more than that left side. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cheated. I, I but knew, he gave the game. I saw him down there. Coming, so I didn't. Uh, it almost looked like you internally rotated that second leg, and your left calf is longer than your right calf. That doesn't look okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a zero. <laughs> so, so Grayson, what are we looking for specifically when he lifts that leg up? Let's go back to the first leg before he was he was gaming it. When we see that hip externally rotate, is that what we want to see, or is we that don't want to see that? Okay, right? we want to see them be able to take that leg up as high as they can and extend it out without having any type of internal or external. So then he is externally rotating. Right. So where where are the compensation? It's just tight hips. Tight hips, abductor. Right, yeah. uh, that lateral gastric can be a little tight too. That calf, that's why we see that foot turn out. And the hip right? flexor too, right? Hip flexor, this way, said hips. Yeah, oh. yeah. So, yeah. So the calves, calves would be a good one. I guess I should be telling you guys that that'll be the main thing that you see when you're testing people: tight calves and not having the T-spine mobility. Yeah. Lats tight, to hips tight, calves tight. Ninety percent of people, right? Some people will stress feel it. You guys want to go? He's, He's mobile. He's young. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next one, the inline lunge. So you'll take your two poles out so you can remove them because you won't use them again. You put your box down. Okay, so the inline lunge, asymmetrical stance that uses a reciprocal arm and leg position to challenge the upper body. Um, so what that means is you're gonna be on your line I don't really know what this reciprocal thing means. I tried to look it up and still blew my mind. So here's a 50, right? So I'm gonna have one toe on the zero, my opposite foot's coming out, the heel will be on the 50. This will be the flat foot, back heel is off the box, okay? So now we're gonna challenge ourselves by taking the dowel. If my left foot's in front, my left hand's gonna be down. So whatever leg's in front, that side, that arm is gonna be down, and then we want three points of contact the back of the skull, the shoulder blades, and the butt crease. And then from here, I don't know how to do this. You should hang my back, bro. I don't know how to do this. Okay, so yeah, it's a 50. This will be a huge choke point for you. People have a lot of problems trying to just line up on the box. If they're having problems with that, have them line up off the box, but still with the same space. Right, right next to it. Okay. So from here, his left hand is low. You want to make sure the hand is in the middle of the, the low back, and then that top hand is right behind the nape of the neck. Okay. So the foot that's back, that arm needs to be up. Can't be opposite. Correct. Right? Okay. You'll switch too, right? So oh, okay. once you guys do the other leg, then that left hand is going to go high, right hand is going to go low. That big back heel has to be. Back heel can be up. Oh, it can. Be. Yes. Okay. So the back heel is going to come up no matter what. It's going to have to lunge. To yeah to drop that knee down to the box. Now go ahead and reach, I tell them this, reach your back knee to the front heel. Ooh. Keep your contact with the dowel, that's what we're looking for, right? And then bring it back up. It's actually a really good movement, Bradley. How was his front foot? Did you guys see if his heel came off the ground? He, he did pretty good, he did pretty good. He did pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, let's do it again. To confirm, he had a good movement, a competent movement. Yeah. We'll do it again to confirm the movement. Yeah, really good ankle mobility, man. That looks great. And then we're, we'll switch sides. Really good. Do your job, brother. We'll switch hands too. Okay. So we're looking for that stable core. It looked like he had a stable core that last time. Did you right? Hands? Oh, yeah. He's good. Where's that down on his butt? Where's he at a little bit, right? Core's mm -hmm. gotta stay tight. Gotta keep the T-spine erect. Elvis has to stay in that neutral position as he goes down, right? Squeeze it. Then come back up. What do you see? Good one? Okay. Put him in that, that three core category on that one. You can rest. Okay, so he had that stable cord. Um, this shows that coordinated use and control with pelvis, hips, knees, and ankles, and we saw that he had a 
premium came on, right? And then that last one focuses on stresses simulated during rotation, deceleration, and lateral movements. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of stuff going on in that one, right? You can see a lot of stuff. So make sure you're paying attention to it. Okay, the shoulder mobility. Uh, again, that word reciprocal coming out again. Reaching patterns. I guess it's just opposite. Side. Right? Okay. Uh, coordinating stable center. We've got to keep it sta stable center. We have to keep our core tight here. T-spine mobility and control. I mean, obviously, if you're going behind our back, we have to have uh, some sort of mobility back there. And then scapula and glenohumeral range of motion and control. So you'll see how all of that comes into play, right? So what you're going to tell them to do is you're going to say, go ahead and spin away from me. You're going to ball up your fist. You're going to reach all the way out and then throw the hands in hold. Okay? From there, you're going to stay behind them or, or you'll have them switch away from you. So that's around. You'll have your dowel ready to measure. You already measured the hand, right? His tibia, or his, excuse me, his hand measured out to 17 clicks. So we want to see if he can get his fists within that 17 clicks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, some asymmetry going on right there. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. That's about what I... Yeah, that's Just like have him move back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is that as far as you can go? Well, hey, do me a favor, Bradley. Put your arms back out again. Scoot back. Uh, he he do it. No, time. squeeze your hands. He's still way off. Come back here. Step back. Yeah, yeah. He's still at. Look at that right. That right shoulder's drop. That left shoulder's up. That's how he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's off in general, but yeah, he's, he's yeah. yeah. External rotation, right? Strong. And then from there, you're trying to find separation through here as you reach out. And then from there, hard, throw your hands and try and get them as close as you can together. Go. Uh, <laughs> is that the same? Is that the same side? Is that the same side? Was that the same side? I don't think that was the same side. No, I think it was the other side. Do the other side again. So do it the same way though. Would you do both sides? Yeah. That's better. Yeah, you'd have to do both sides. Yeah. Okay, so he would be a three on both sides. That would be what you did. If it's under the number if 17? If it's past 17, I think it's if it's two past 17, you're in. Uh, okay, so you can either be bucket three, bucket two, or bucket one because you're looking for a pain. So watch, though, and this is just more for my edification because it's been a long time since I've done this. When he was doing that, his rib cage was flaring up. Like a ton, he was clearing some space, so right? What is, what is, is it that? it's core stability? Is core stability. Um, exactly. So, are, are we going to pull that? Are we going to use that to bring that number down a little bit? Are we going to cue him? I just don't want to give him another that? three. Yeah. So if I would have seen that, I was. <laughs> we I didn't seen, know. Idea. If I would have seen that, I would have told him, okay. So this time we're going to go through it again, right? That's why you have your confirmation, right? Mm -hmm. If he has a good, if that person has a good movement and it's competent, confirm it. And if it's confirmed, you're good. But obviously, if, if they're doing that, you need to change the cue, make sure that they know what you want, and then redo the actual test. So let's do it again. All right. But you got to keep your core tight. Go back. So, shoulder, so you guys can have yes, your mind with that. There you go. Same thing. So keep this all tight. Four. Yes. That's better. So we're at 16. And this looks good. It looks good. Yeah. Okay, let's do the other side. They want me to fail so bad. <laughs> yeah, I just want different things to look at. Okay, so he's at 20 on that side. Your core looks good, though. Mm -hmm. so, right? So that would be in bucket two, bucket three, excuse me. Asymmetry between right and left scores. So that left side, left hand high, I would score him as a, I'd score him as a three. It looked pretty good mm -hmm. with this core tight. But that right hand high, I'd probably give him a one. Okay. Um, okay, ASLR, active straight leg raise. So I would even describe this as a hamstring mm -hmm. test, but it's not. Okay. Hmm. Um, so from here, I'm going to make the client lay down. So I want him to lay down. Nope. You're going to lay with your knees over the top of the box. Okay? So from here, you'll have to okay. adjust and scoot back just a little bit. Okay, so the dowel, the way we're measuring this here is the dowel's gonna come right up in the middle of his quad, okay? From here, the idea is gonna be to see him keep that right leg glued into the ground, 
simultaneously taking his left foot up as high as he can while keeping that knee straight. Okay, so go ahead, take it up as high as you can, keeping it straight, and he cleared it pretty well. He's a little shaky. You can check and see if maybe he's cramping up here or cramping here. Nothing. Oh, that definitely hurts. That. Yeah. That looks good, That's right? I give him a three. It's good. It's not really the hardest test that you can give him, but it's definitely not just your hamstrings that you're looking at here. Okay. All right. So left heel's gonna stay down this time, and then the right leg's coming up. And that one's really oh, good. Wow. He really cleared that, mm -hmm. right? But then again, we need to make sure we're looking at that left leg. Is it strong and stable? Is he keeping it out? Is there any bend in the knee? Is it Do they need to the have that foot flexed more? I would like to see the dorsiflexion the entire time, right? The more you can pull your toe back and get that leg back further, <laughs> but I just want to, I want to make sure that your knee doesn't bend. Okay, so let me just see. Bradley, I'd get like so it's not a hamstring test. Influence my pants. anterior posterior <laughs> chain, your lumbo pelvic control. It looks at essential skill of dis dissociation between lower extremities with appropriate lumbo pelvic control. I have a question. Yes. So older people that aren't even gonna be able to do like get down on the ground, be able to get back up and stuff like that. Right. So like, is that just automatically a zero? I would put it as a zero. If they wanted to try it, you could always let them try it. Okay. But what this is, no matter what numbers, positives or negatives, it's, it's just location. Yeah. Right? To come back and see that or to be like, I was able to do that. Right. Because that's such a surprise to them when they can't do simple movements like that, right? So if you're able to get them with the trainer, the trainer can mm -hmm. teach them how to do that stuff. Because you'll see on this next one right here, okay? So the trunk, trunk stability push up. So Bradley's going to lay on his belly. This will hard. Final mm -hmm. Bradley's on his belly. From here, I'm going to tell him to tuck his toes. So I want the bottom, yep. Bottom of his toes are pushing in the ground. And then from here, I'm going to tell him, take your thumbs to your temples. And then elbows on the ground. And then from there, I'm going to open my hands out to a 90 degree bend in my elbow. What? Bradley? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Are you sticking out your tongue right now? I feel like you're sticking out your tongue. There you go. He has his 90 degree bend. He's going to plant the hand. Oh, you want okay. me to let go of that temple. Uh -huh. <laughs> now from here, we want to make okay. sure, because you can already see, it. he's going to do a push up from this position. For real? Right? So that's pretty. You probably could. It's really not as complicated. People, it's scary, but it's, if you read it, it's just anti extension, right? You got to keep your shoulders down. So what I tell them is shoulder blades in your back pocket. Okay? You get what I'm saying? Yep. Let's, can I take this back? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> he likes his new haircut. <laughs> and then let's put that down for yeah. him. Okay. Uh, from there, so shoulder blades in his back pocket. Brace your belly like somebody is about to punch you, and then squeeze your glutes as tight as you can. From there, all at once. Nice glutes. Push yourself up. Go. Nice. Wow. Right. So you, you see what I'm saying? If he Breathe. wasn't able to keep that tight, what happens to the low back? Everything over yeah. 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 Right into it. Okay, so you have to watch it when you're doing that, doing that with your client. I still don't think it was that great, to be honest. <laughs> there was a lot of arch there. But it looked cool. It did look cool. You did it. And that's what matters. But I'd give you a two. Oh, okay. Okay. Take that. Room for improvement. Okay, last one. Rotary stability. Okay, actually, let's go through that real quick. Uh, trunk stability push-up. Ability to respond appropriately to an extension stress. Right? Something trying to pull you out of position. Okay? Um, to resist extension and display control of the stable center, right? Keeping his core engaged so that none of that dumps into his low back. Sagittal plane stability. I mean, it kind of looks weird because you're doing a push up. Um, and if your stabilizers do not respond appropriately, the spine will be loaded inappropriately, right? So protect your back. So you see your belly. It's the most important part, okay? And then the last one, rotary stability. Ipsilateral, contralateral, you're gonna do both sides here. What this is, Bradley, you're gonna get down and straddle the box with three points of contact, okay? So your thumbs will be on it, your knees are gonna be on the box, and then your toes are gonna be on the box. But you'll be off the side. Oh, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh. So, okay. so awesome. straddle. Right, straddle oh, like the box. This. Okay, and then from here, I wanna make sure, right off the bat anyways, that his shoulders are right over his wrists. So shoulders are over his wrists, he's still not, so come forward a little bit. But I want his hips to be right over his knees, so he needs to scoot his feet back. Good. And then from here, his toes are on, right? So toes, knees, thumbs are on. 
We all know what bird dog is, right? Bradley, do you know what bird dog is? Good. So what do we want to look for here first? What do we not want to see go into the spine? Okay. No extension, exactly. We don't want to see the spine go into that. So he has to brace his belly as he opens opposite arm and leg. Go ahead. Good. And then from there, knee to elbow, going through flexion through the spine, and then take it back out full range of motion, and then put it back to the box. So that looked really good, yeah. right? Kept it out of extension. His belly looked like it was on. Everything looked good. So we'll do the other side. Elbow to knee. Take it back out. And rest. Okay. So that was the easy part. Now we're going to do it where it's, this would be it. Today. Exactly. Okay. So Bradley, I want you to do the same thing. Just I want you to lift up one side of your body. Yes. Like Just like that. Oh. Hey. Okay, so let's take our time on it a little bit more. I would say to the client, I would say lift your leg up first, okay? And then from there, brace it all, keep it tight, and take your arm up. And then bring it back. Nice. That was really good. Okay, we'll do the other side. Same thing, that leg goes up first, no extension in the spine. Take your time. You keep that belly braced, right? Let's do it again, brother. Keep your belly braced. Bring it back. <laughs> so I might be a little weaker. That's okay. But you guys see, that one's a pretty challenging one, too. Mm -hmm. At the West location, I put a mat in our trainer center so I can put underneath the box and they can bring these down if they need to. You're the one who took my mat. But accommodate them on what? I said, you're the one. I was like, what son of a took that mat? Yeah, put it up here. Okay. It makes sense now. I put more out there. I put more. It's all good. You know? But that's it. Right? So those seven different movements, there's a lot more stuff to this, right? Mm -hmm. There's a whole why behind it. There's just not enough time to talk about it. Okay. But you gotta keep it simple, right? As simple as possible. I know this is a lot of shit, but this is an amazing tool to use for your clients, especially when you're giving these people to trainers. You want those trainers to know as much as they can about that client. Mm -hmm. And you can already see there's a lot of information they have from it. Yes. Um, one, thank you, Grayson. Two, if um you know, we want you guys to train on this. To